at the vault. I'm Ruthie Rogers and today I'm going to show you how to make a quick easy summertime lunch that will consist of a ham and gruyere cheese quiche, some fresh fruit and some blueberry muffins. We will be toasting at the end with a glass of cool Riesling. But before we get started I want to introduce my guest for the day. Terry Nielsen has been kind enough to join me again. Hi, Hi Terry. How Hello. are you doing? I'm great thanks. Good. Do you like quiche? I do. I like quiche as well, but they say, you know, real men don't eat quiche. I've heard that and read the book, but at you our You like house, to cook as well as I do. Yeah. So do your men at your house eat they your quiche? They do. They especially like quiche with ham or bacon or something like that. Put the meat and uh -huh. stuff they, they in they it. They prefer that, but the yep, men. they eat it. Well, this has mustard in it as well, so most men like mustard, so maybe that It'd will be a help hit. a little bit. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Terry and I are going to make this wonderful quiche for you. So we'll see you back here in a few minutes on Cooking at the Vault. Today's featured books are The Silver Palette Cookbook by Julie Rosso and Sheila Lukens. The quiche was made out of this cookbook. The second book featured is Muffins and Other Morning Bakes by Linda Collister, and this is where the muffins came out of. Both of these books are available here at the Book Vault. Welcome back to Cooking at the Vault. I'm Ruthie Rogers. My guest is Terry Nielsen today. We are now going to make a wonderful quick quiche for you to have for a light summertime lunch. It's a ham and gruyere cheese quiche. And Terry, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to have you grate about a cup and a half of the cheese. I'd love to. I'm going to chop some ham. You can use any kind of ham that you like. I like the slices. And then just to cut it into bite-sized pieces. And with the slices, then it makes smaller pieces even inside the quiche so you don't have big chunks, just my preference. And the Gruyere cheese is a smooth, it's got a little tang to it, but it's I it's think a it's a member of the Swiss family, isn't it? Close to a Swiss, yeah. yes. I think it melts a little bit better than the Swiss, but... So if you couldn't find Gruyere at the store, you could get Swiss. Definitely use mm -hmm. Swiss, yep. You're going to want, we're going to use a 10 inch pie crust. And for a 10 inch pie crust for your fillings, you're going to want two to three cups of filling, just depending on how much filling you like, but you got to save room for the custard part of it, which I'm going to start on. Okay, Ruthie. I think I've about got a cup and a half here. That's pretty close. And the custard for any basic quiche is going to be one and a half cups of either heavy cream, I prefer half and half. So either a cup, of, cup and a half of heavy cream or half and half. So you wouldn't want to try any skim milk in there? Probably wouldn't have a very good consistency and wouldn't cook up right and would probably be really thin. Um, so I'm just I like the do half it, do it and right. half just to saves a few calories. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, still has a really good thick creamy consistency. So this is going to be your basic custard for a quiche. And from here is where you kind of add your own touches to whatever kind of quiche you're making. So since I'm making a ham and cheese quiche, I'm going to add some Dijon mustard, Ooh. which goes always very well with ham. Mm -hmm. Gives it a little, little tang, a little bite. And you're going to always season with salt and pepper. I like fresh ground pepper, just adds you know, you can the tell the difference. Pepper flavor. Yep. And salt. Almost everything I bake or cook, I add salt to because it, it really does bring out the flavors of all the the cheese, the ham, the mustard. And then just for almost every quiche I make, I put a little bit of nutmeg in. Fresh nutmeg. Fresh nutmeg. These are the whole nutmegs. And you really notice a difference between you that really and the really can tell a difference. Just kind of jumps out at you a little more. And I'd say put in an eighth of a teaspoon. Of course, use your, your microplane yeah. grater to do that. If you'd grab the crust, I think we're ready to fill. Alrighty. Let's leave it on the pan. Oh. I always cook it on a pan in case it overflows. Then you don't have eggs all over the bottom of your oven. It goes <laughs> in the pan. It's easier to clean up. I like to start by putting my fillings in the bottom of the pan. And we're going to use about a cup of that, Terry, and we're going to save a little more to put on top, or if we want to, we can just grate some more and put it on okay. top. Okay. I might just grate a titch more. 
can't have too much cheese. <laughs> That's right. And you got to have it on top because it. And we didn't use heavy cream. We did the half and half. There we go. So we saved some of the. We calories, deserve it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you're going to pour your custard in. Make sure. You want it to come just about to the top of the crust. Don't get it too close to the top or it will overflow on you. It's not going to get a lot bigger. It'll puff up more so than going out over the edges with the spool as we have it. Okay. And we will just put some more of this over the top. You know, you can do so much with quiche. I like to make a broccoli quiche. And the asparagus. The nutmeg's really good in that. Asparagus is very good. Crab is oh, good, and you can add like a seafood seasoning to it, or if you want to add some red pepper flakes oh, that to wonderful. it. I mean, you could do anything you wanted to with it. So, how easy was that to put together? Pretty very easy. easy. I'm going to stick this in the oven. The oven's been preheated to 375. I'm very carefully without dumping it over the edge. <laughs> It's going to bake for about 40 to 45 minutes, but I made one ahead so you can see what it looks like. See that good cheese it over the top? It looks delicious. How good does that look? <laughs> so now we've done the quiche. When we come back, we're going to make some blueberry muffins with some almonds in the crust, and they are very good. So we'll see you back here in a few minutes on Cooking at the Vault. I'm Ruthie Rogers and my guest today is Terry Nielsen. We just finished making our quiche for our summertime lunch and we are now going to make some almond lemon blueberry muffins. Oh Ruthie, I can't wait for these. Sounds really tough but they're really easy and very good. Okay. So we have started by spraying a 12 cup muffin pan. If you like to use the paper cups you can. Mm -hmm. um, if you grease the pan good enough, I don't think they're necessary, no. but they're kind of fun for, for show or for parties. So that is ready. I've got the oven preheating to 400, so it's ready as soon as the muffins are put into the pan because they shouldn't really set after you put them in the pan. So okay. I'm going to start by mixing my dry ingredients, and I've got a third cup of crushed chopped almonds. And did you do that yourself? I did. The book calls for whole blanched almonds. Mm -hmm. I like just raw almonds with the skin still on and I've processed them in my food processor or you can do them in a blender or you can uh -huh. use a knife if you want to. It just depends on, you don't want it real fine because uh -huh. you want, you know, some pieces of almond. And you could do it with a knife? To taste it. I, yeah, you could. Okay. I think the bigger the pieces, the better you're going to taste it. So Sounds great. Mine aren't real fine. And then I'm going to sift in one and a quarter cups of, one and three quarter cups of flour. I just run mine through a strainer instead of using a sifter like your mom used. I don't know what you use, but... I have one. I use it once a year. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just to make sure there's no lumps in your flour and to kind of puff up some more air in there. Or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get some air in there. Mm -hmm. and just shake it through your um, strainer and then you're going to add a tablespoon of baking powder and you want to sift that into it as well. Try to keep all of it mixed together. Then once you've got all of your dry ingredients sifted, we are going to add a third cup of sugar. And then I'm going to grate the rind of the lemon off. Okay. It calls for the whole lemon, which when you do a whole lemon, comes out to be, what, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, usually? Yeah, not too much. And you want to remember when you're grating or zesting a lemon or a lime, you want just the top color. If you get down into the white part, it tends to turn bitter. Mm -hmm. And you don't want bitterness, you yeah. want the nice smell. Can you smell that? I Doesn't can already, so yeah, good? it smells great. It smells like summer, it smells like sitting on the deck. 
Eating quiche and muffin. <laughs> Couldn't be better. Again, I use the microplane grater, works wonderful for that. So you're going to mix all your dry ingredients together. What kind of muffins are your favorite? I would probably say blueberry. Are they? Mm -hmm. that, I think that's, whoops, about everybody's favorite. Yeah. My favorite are poppy seed. Oh, yeah. Either lemon or almond poppy seed. That sounds good, too. Now we're going to add the wet ingredients, which is one egg. I believe it's a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And do you always use a, a canola oil or something like that? I like canola oil mm -hmm. for stuff like this. Yep. And it's heart healthy, Ruthie. It is. Mix that a little bit and then we're going to add one and a quarter cups of milk. And I just use 2% here. I think skim would probably work in this if yeah. you're kind of trying to watch your calories. but. You like things to be taste good and, and be a little rich too. So. And every muffin recipe always says don't stir too much after you've... Exactly. Mm -hmm. This one you're just supposed to make sure you've worked in all the, the dry ingredients. And the big lumps. And the, get the big lumps mm -hmm. out. I think that's good. And then I'm going to fold in one cup of blueberries. And you like fresh better. These are fresh because they're at the grocery store and available and I think in season, you know, if they're in season, use the fresh ones. If you're going to use frozen, make sure you put them directly from the freezer into the muffins. Don't let them thaw out. Mm -hmm. And with the fresh ones, make sure you rinse them and drain them Because you really can turn well. your whole muffin blue. I mean, we've had blue muffins before. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they fall apart. Yeah. Okay, if you'll put the muffin pan mm. over here, we will fill these up. I want to fill them about two-thirds of the way full. And this is always such a messy job. You try not to get it on the top of your pan, then yeah. it burns. And Oh, these will be delicious. I think you could add cinnamon to this that would spice it up. Or even some of your nutmeg. Nutmeg would be mm -hmm. good. I think they'd be fun to make in one of the, the giant muffin pans. Have you seen those? I don't think so. How big are you Just, talking? They're big. And for one Probably person both. to eat the whole muffin? Yep. Of course you don't bad. need calories, but I know. I know. <laughs> It'd be your whole meal. There you go. I couldn't believe how big the blueberries were. Yeah, they've been beautiful. And I'm not a huge blueberry fan. I like them in the muffins. I like them but in But my everything. son likes to just sit and put them on a cereal or Oh yeah, or we whatever. do too, so, we do too. Well, you're lucky because they are very good for you. So just get rid of the excess on top and how easy was that? These are gonna go in the oven and they're going to bake about 20 to 25 minutes. Get them nice and golden brown like the ones that I pre-made. Oh Thought Ruthie, those let's good. go, yes. They came right out of the pan since it was sprayed so good. Let's dig in. I am ready <laughs> to have breakfast. So the muffins are done. When we come back, we are going to cut up some cantaloupe and some strawberries, and we will plate up our summer lunch and pour us some more wine and sit down and have us a bite to eat. So Wonderful. join us back here in a few minutes on Cooking at the Vault. I'm Ruthie Rogers and my guest for the day has been Terry Nielsen. We have finished making our summertime lunch. Terry, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to have you cut and plate the quiche. I will I'm gladly. I'm going to slice us up some fresh fruit. It's getting into a good time of year for fresh fruit and Hy-Vee has a wonderful selection. That's where I got the blueberries for today. I'm using some cantaloupe and some fresh strawberries. Would it be alright if I just divided this into two, Ruthie? You and me. Well, that would be enough Probably for us. my stomach for, <laughs> for good right now. Okay, I didn't do the greatest job. Well, sometimes they tend to stick. Oh. If you'll hand me that one, I will. Alrighty. I really probably think you'd get, what, six pieces out of here? Yeah. 
five or six. If you want it, you know, if you're using it for a meal, I think you need to have a decent size. Yep. For the real men that do eat quiche. There you go. Mm -hmm. Then they, you probably have to just do it in fours for them. All righty, ma'am. There you go. Okay, if you'll set that there. I will. We'll this one and. Okay, we've got our summer lunch put together, and now that we've showed you what we've done, we're going to go back and do a recap on what all we did today. We started with the ham and Gruyere quiche. To make this tasty dish, you need sliced ham and a block of Gruyere cheese. You'll also need a pie crust, eggs, half and half, and a bit of nutmeg. The first step is to shred the cheese and cube the ham. Add the eggs, mustard, the salt and pepper, then whisk. Lay the ham in the pie crust, cover with the cheese, pour in the eggs, then bake. Make sure you get a hearty helping of this delicious quiche. These wholesome muffins make a great companion to our quiche. First you'll want to round up all your wet and dry ingredients. Don't forget a fresh lemon and blueberries. Sift the flour, zest the lemon, and blend. Add your wet ingredients and mix together well. Mix in your blueberries, then pour into a muffin pan. Bake until cooked and serve. Then garnish the meal with fresh fruit. Well, as you can see, we've moved from the kitchen to the table and we are ready to enjoy this wonderful summertime lunch that we've prepared. On behalf of my guest for the day, Terry Nelson, I'm Ruthie Rogers. Thanks for joining us at Cooking at the Vault. Thank you, Terry. And thank you, Ruthie, for having me. For today's menu card, as well as clips for upcoming episodes, go to the MCG website at www.mahaska.org. And for more healthy living recipes, go to Hy-Vee's website at www.hyvee.com.